Hey guys, how's it going? I am here today with a Q&A video all about Disney. I asked you guys if you had some questions and I got actually a lot more questions than I thought I would. So that's exciting. So I'm gonna read the questions, I've got them here, and answer them. So this should be fun. All right, so I got a couple questions that had to do with the resort or where we decide to stay. So let me read the questions that all kind of pertain to that. And then I think my answer will actually probably answer all of the questions. So the first one is, um, where do you stay that fits six people? The next question is, where all have you stayed and how would you rank them? And then the other question about the resorts was, um, how do you decide where to stay each trip? Okay, so those three questions, um, the where to stay with six is, there are some rooms that sleep six, but we have found we prefer to actually just get two rooms. Or um, if we do Art of Animation, they have a family suite that has two bathrooms in it. And so we have done that before too. But we want two bathrooms. So um, we've stayed in places that sleep six, but you only get one bathroom with most of those. And we really like the two bathrooms. So um, I guess I should just go ahead and list out. Like on property, just in case you're wondering, Art of Animation has rooms that sleep six. Um, well, I guess, I mean, and then there's like a family suite at All Star Music, I think. We have not stayed there, though. And then you and can do like DVC, and they have um, units or villas that are like two-bedroom villas, and they definitely sleep six. They sleep more than six. And then there's a few other like family suites, I think, at some of the... Um, deluxe but we haven't really stayed at those most people who need a room that sleeps six end up staying at art of animation or the family suite at all star or they do a dvc villa that's two bedrooms um so that kind of answers that part now where all have we stayed and how would i rank them okay let me think through here and i'm going to list them in order that i can think through my trips and then i guess i'll rank them maybe because i don't know how else to do that so we have stayed at coronado springs um, Pop Century, we have stayed at All Star Music, we have stayed at uh, Animal Kingdom Kadani, and we've stayed at Animal Kingdom Jumbo. I guess this is not in chronological order, just so you know. Um, we have stayed at Polynesian, Grand Floridian, um, Caribbean Beach, Art of Animation, I think that is everywhere that we have stayed on property. And then off property, we have stayed, well, it's not really off property. There's, it's um, Disney Springs Hotel. We've stayed at the Drury, or no, it wasn't a Drury. It's a Doubletree. Doubletree down um, at Disney Springs. And then we have stayed just barely off property in Flamingo Crossings. And I can't even remember what it's called. It, it's right next to the Fairfield. But I don't remember what the one is we stayed at. It's, it, I can't remember right now. If you're really, really curious, reach out to me and I will look that up and find that for you. I cannot remember, but it's part of Flamingo Crossings. There's like three hotels right there in Flamingo Crossings. They are super cl close to being on property. You really could not be any closer and be off property. Um, you literally just go, you leave the parking lot, you go under a bridge and you are there. I actually have videos that are um, reviews of these. I will link them up above and I'm sure the title or the name of that will be up there. So check that out. Now, how would I rank where all we have stayed? That is really hard because I like so many of them. We obviously really like deluxe better than you like. I like the economy. Um, you just get so much more and I mean, you get what you pay for. So the more you pay, I would hope the more you like it. But okay, so my number one resort is probably Polynesian. I love the Polynesian. I would stay there every single time if I could, but um, there's several reasons we don't. And I'll go into that further probably later here. I So I would say Polynesian is number one. Animal Kingdom, and I like Kadani and Jumbo probably equally. That's probably our number two. Our number three would actually be Caribbean Beach. It is a moderate, so like in the middle. 
And we really like Caribbean Beach. Some people don't like it because it's really big. But um, the pool there is great. The food court there is okay. And we really like having the Skyliner. And then the theming is really nice. And when we do Caribbean Beach, we get two rooms. So we still have lots of room and it's spacious. Um, so Because another problem I've heard of Caribbean Beach is people think it's too small. But since we have two rooms, we, we definitely don't feel cramped for space. That's plenty of room for us. But... Um, those are probably my top few. And then everywhere else we've stayed, I've liked. Um, I wouldn't say I love. The kids really like Art of Animation. And Michael, actually, my husband, he really likes Art of Animation. Um, I did not dislike Art of Animation, but I probably would not ever book there if my family didn't ask to stay there. If that makes sense, I would much rather stay at um, Jumbo House or Polynesian Um I just really enjoy sitting in the lobby at those resorts, uh, even. I just enjoy those resorts. All right, which I, I hope that answer is kind of the ranking. It's so hard. Um, but that kind of leads us into the, like, where we choose or how we choose where we're staying. And it kind of depends on the trip. So sometimes, depending on who goes with us, I may choose to stay at a certain place for you know, either needing more space or being at a certain price point, depending on who all is going to be there. So I can try and accommodate everyone's needs. Um, we enjoy trying a different resort. So we try and not stay in the same place every single time because we, we want to experience the new resorts. So we do take that into consideration when we're booking. We're like, where have we not stayed that we would want to stay? So we do try that. Um, and so, again, I we spend a lot of time watching, like, uh, Here With The Ears, I believe is what their name is. And they do a lot of resort room tours. And so we will watch those and just seeing what, like, the room is like and what the pool is like. We kind of will kind of do, like, a little family vote and decide where we want to stay. Or this last trip when we stayed at Jumbo, we surprised the kids. And that one's because me and Michael had stayed there. And we enjoyed it so much that we were like, we need to bring the kids back. So that's why we um, went ahead and just did Jumbo and didn't even tell them that's what we were going to do. But because we had stayed at Kadani and the kids love Kadani, but we enjoyed Jumbo even more. I, I, I mean, there's so good. Yeah. There are so many good things about both those resorts that I have trouble picking between the two of them. But we definitely wanted to bring the kids back to Jumbo. So that is why we chose it that time. Um, sorry, there's like a hair itching my nose. Uh, so yeah, it just, each trip kind of depends. Um, looking at my budget and who else coming, how much space we need, and that plays a lot into what I want to do. Another deciding factor is sometimes availability because there have been some times that I went to book um, Polynesian and they were completely booked full and so I had to alter course. Um, the trip that me and Michael took by ourselves, we were actually wanting to stay at Polynesian but they did not have any availability and that's kind of how we ended up at Jumbo. We thought, well, let's try Jumbo and we loved it. So Sometimes that is what happens. In fact, the first time I ever stayed at Animal Kingdom Lodge in Kadani was because we were supposed to be staying at Polynesian, but Polynesian was booked the first two nights that we were going to be there, and so I needed to find an alternative hotel, and that is what the travel person I was talking to at Disney recommended, and so I was like, okay, I guess it's just two nights, and I liked it so much more than I ever thought I would, so sometimes it's just happenstance. So our upcoming trip, um, which I think that might be a question. I'll have to look here in a minute. Our next upcoming trip that we will take, um, I think we are going to stay at Wilderness Lodge because we, we like to go and visit the resorts when we're there. And that is one every time we go and visit, my husband is like, man, I really like it here. I'd love to stay here. And so I think the plan is to try and stay there because he it's kind of on his bucket list. So that is probably where we'll go next unless we end up doing some little quick trip or something and then it'll be different but i think that's our plan so yeah i it's not really a great answer i guess for how we decide but it's there's a little bit different each time all right next question all right so i have several different screenshots here so i think i'll just go ahead and start answering i guess in order of the screenshots so um this one is would you ever live in orlando and 
yes, I would love to live in Orlando. Um, we have actually tried to move to Orlando a few times, but for whatever reason, I'm going to say God just probably didn't want us there. Um, the jobs that Michael applied for, we tried, none of it just worked out. And we never really had a good piece about it anyway. And so even though I was kind of sad, you know, that the jobs didn't work out and that we were going to move there, at the same time, we kind of knew even if they said yes, um, we didn't know if we could say yes. So it, we are where we are supposed to be. But yes, if just the perfect job ever just showed up and asked Michael to take us there, then I would be so excited. I don't know that I would actually live in Orlando though. I've done some looking in the area and I think I'd like to live in Lakeland. It is a little bit smaller of a community just outside of Orlando and I think it would give me a little bit more of the same vibe that we have here where we are now. And the kids would, you know, be in smaller teams for like sports and all that kind of stuff. But yet Disney would be super close because I do not love the Orlando traffic. And I don't think Michael would enjoy um, commuting in that kind of traffic. So we would probably prefer to be a little bit on the outskirts. Of course, I guess it would depend on what his job was because, I mean, that kind of you kind of have to go wherever that is. But if I, if I had my pick in a perfect world, I would probably pick there. All right. right, what keeps you coming back to Disney World? It is just the perfect vacation spot, at least for us personally. We have gone to other vacation spots and we do have fun, but we all agree that we always have the most fun when we are at Disney World. Disney or land, Disneyland is great too. Both of the Disney parks though here in the States, they offer something for everyone. There's rides that every single person in the family can enjoy. There's shows that we enjoy. And I personally just enjoy the atmosphere. And then at Disney World, I love the resorts. We have even talked about doing a resort only vacation a few times because we love the hotels so much that we would just love to spend more time there. But yeah, it's just Everywhere we've ever traveled, it's the one place that everyone's always like, we really want to go back. Other than the beach, we really enjoy going to the beach too, but um, it's a different kind of fun. It's different. All right, so let's see. This one, I've answered that one. How do you keep the Disney magic going at home? All right, so I mean, I have little random decor around the house that's Disney themed. Um, we like watching Disney movies. Uh, for a while I was doing themed dinner nights that went along with a Disney theme and it wasn't necessarily always a movie. Sometimes it was like Epcot theme or Animal Kingdom theme and we would try and like kind of mimic our favorite restaurant at that theme park and do that. So we've done things like that. Um, we like to play a lot of Disney music. Uh, there's Sorcerer's Radio is what it's called and we like to listen to that and then I also found Pandora has a theme park like channel as well that they play theme park music on so we like that and then we really like watching live streams. Um, Resort TV One is probably our favorite live streamer and we love to watch them. They're live every Friday nights and so that's kind of our Friday night thing um, and sometimes if I'm feeling really creative I'll try and base my meal off of wherever they are going to be so that, you know, we can be a little more immersive with it. But yeah, that's kind of how we keep Disney alive at home. It's fun. Um, all right. So what is your dream job at Disney World? That's interesting. Um, <clears throat> okay. So when I was younger, I would have loved to be a like princess or one of like the dancer performers, you know, that you see in the parade and stuff. I think that would have been super fun. And honestly, had I realized that was even an option in life, <laughs> instead of going to college after high school, I probably would have just moved to Orlando and auditioned until I got something. I think that would have been great fun. I went to school um, as a theater major, at least I began that way, and I changed after a little while, but so that would have been really fun to just go straight into doing that. Um, nowadays, like if I were to go get a job today, I'm too old to be a princess and I don't know that I could do the dancing anymore either. So I don't know, honestly, it probably would be fun even just to work in the gift shop because the atmosphere there is just so delightful. Um, yeah, I, I think I probably just enjoy being there, but I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what my dream job would be currently at Disney World.
That would be interesting. All right. My next question is, how do you rope drop and do breakfast? Um, okay. So we are not huge breakfast people. We usually just do like breakfast bars um, or some kind of a grab and go snack or breakfast type snack that we have in the room. Um, if we are staying on property, we like to have the refillable mugs. So we will um, get drinks with those, but then the kids will just grab like a breakfast bar, like a little pack of muffins or something like that. And we just kind of eat as we're headed towards the park or we'll be eating as we're getting dressed. Um, we don't really spend a whole lot of time on breakfast. Now we do once, sometimes twice during our trips, we will go to an actual like quick service or a character breakfast, well, something nicer and do like a sit down and actually enjoy our breakfast. But um, that is just not, breakfast is not our priority. We would rather get there early and get on things than eat. So, I mean, if you wanted to do breakfast and a rope drop, I don't know, it can be kind of hard because a lot of those restaurants don't even open until like the same time as rope drop. Sometimes you can do some in the park, but you're still probably not going to quite make road drops. So it's kind of hard to do both. You kind of have to pick, I guess, what your priority is. Do you do after hours? Yes, we um, do do after hours. Not all of us can always stay for the after hours. This last trip, our first after hour night was at Epcot and it was only until 11. And so all of us stayed. It was tiring, but all of us stayed. The next after hours night we had was at Magic Kingdom and it was until midnight. And so I was just kind of, even before park close, I was done and tired and just, yeah, done. And the little two were tired. And so I took the younger two back to the room and Michael stayed with the older two and they were able to enjoy after hours. So I, we kind of just play it by ear. Um, but I really am enjoying the after hour stuff they're doing. I think it's super fun. And it's just so unique to see the park kind of empty. It's, it's weird. It's a new experience. So yeah, we try and do as many after hours as we can. I will say the days we did after hour, we did go back to the room in the afternoon and we rested for a while. Um, we did not do just like open to close at the park and or open to close to after hours. Um, with the kids. Now, when me and Michael went, we, we kind of did do that. But um, yeah, we, we did go back and rest for a little while, which I think that actually was a question on here. Did I see? Yes, do you do open to close is a question. And yeah, we do do open to close usually-ish. I mean, we get there as close to open as we can. And we usually stay as close to close as we can. But, I mean, we don't force ourselves. If we're tired we're and we're done, we go back to the room. Or if everyone's moving slow in the morning, we just get there when we can. But I personally like to be there as much as I can. And it kind of depends on where we're staying, too. So when we're staying deluxe, we tend to spend a little bit more time in the room because we're enjoying the resort. If we're at economy, we do not spend near as much time at the room. We pretty much just sleep. Um, the resorts are fine that are economy, but they're just not as enjoyable. They do have, I mean, they still have pools and like a little playground. And so, I mean, there is some time spent there, but it's just not, we don't sit there wishing we were at the resort. We're sometimes like when I'm at Hollywood Studios waiting on someone to ride a ride or something, I'm like, hmm, I actually would rather be at the resort right now. So like we do enjoy the deluxe and spending time there a little bit more than if we're at economy. Um, so that also changes if we're there open to close. But all right. So now let me see. I think I skipped one. Um, are park hoppers worth it? I think so. <clears throat> I really enjoy park hoppers because there are certain parks that I just don't want to spend all day at. Um, Animal Kingdom, I don't mind spending all day at, but since they close early, a lot of times, earlier than the other parks, it is nice to have hoppers on those days because we'll stay at Animal Kingdom until we're done. And then maybe, you know, it'll be like five o'clock. So I feel like that's still kind of early to just go to bed. And so we like to have a hopper because then, you know, you can hop over to the Magic Kingdom and watch fireworks or hop over to Epcot and do dinner or 
just, you know, it just opens up a lot of different options. Um, I also really like hoppers for our Hollywood Studio Day because um, Hollywood Studios, I know, is a lot of people's favorite. It's not my favorite. Um, I do like certain things at Hollywood Studios, but to me, it's kind of a half-day park. Um, I would much rather spend my time at the other three parks. So a lot of times we'll go and do what we want at Hollywood Studios and then hop to like Epcot or somewhere like that and enjoy our afternoon at Epcot and then maybe hop back to Hollywood Studios to watch Fantasmic because I do like Fantasmic but it's really hard for me to last at Hollywood Studios all day long. Um, so I mean, if you have not been in a long time, I think you can easily spend all day at Hollywood Studios because they have a lot of shows and things like that that you're going to want to see. But since we've gone frequently here recently, I just don't always feel like rewatching the same shows over and over. So, um, and that's really what a lot of your time spent is doing at Hollywood Studios is shows. At least I feel like it is. Um, so yes, I like having the hoppers, but you don't have to have them to have a good trip. Um, we've gone both ways and both ways are fun. All right. So let's see, what is your favorite park? Okay. Um, well, I guess I answered a little bit about what my least favorite park was. I would say my favorite is Epcot. Um, it used to be the Magic Kingdom, but the older I get, the more I just really, really like Epcot. And it's like my number one place I want to be at. So definitely Epcot. Then I would say Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, and then Hollywood Studios. That would be my my order. All right. Um, what happened to going to Alani? Okay, so... We had hoped to go to Hawaii and stay at Alani, and we weren't actually going to stay at Alani um, the whole trip. We were just going to do like half the trip at Alani, and then there were some other things in Hawaii we wanted to do. And that was this, that was supposed to be like this month that we were going to do that. But, you know, they had that fire, and then, I don't know, just, it seemed... I felt like they didn't really want people to come when I was like in the planning process. And so I just kind of decided to switch gears and change it and just do Disney World because I knew we wanted Disney World and put Alani on the back burner. So hopefully one day we will get there. Um, it just didn't work out this time. I just, I felt like it was bad timing and yeah, it just kind of fell apart. I don't know. There... There wasn't a huge reason why. It was just kind of one of those things where the more I planned, the more I was just like, I don't know if we really want to do this right now. So I don't know. Eventually, maybe we'll get there. Um, my kids really want to go, and I would love to take them and go. I've never been to Hawaii, so I do think it would be really interesting. So hopefully in the future. All right, so top 10 characters that you try and see. Um... We don't spend a lot of time seeking out characters. I like to just kind of randomly see them. We do usually try and see Minnie and Mickey when we have the younger two. Um, Bella really enjoys seeing Minnie and Mickey. And I usually do that actually at Animal Kingdom because it's a good thing for me to do with the younger two while Michael is riding Flight of Avatar, Flight of Passage, Flight of Passage. With the older two, I don't really ride that ride, and the younger two don't like that ride. So that's a nice thing for us to do while we're waiting, because the older two don't care if they see Minnie and Mickey. And then um, Bella usually wants to try and see a princess, but we don't go out of our way to find a princess. It's usually like if we happen to see one around what we're doing, we will jump in line and see the princess. Um, so, or like this last trip, we just went to the little royal fair or whatever it's called there in Magic Kingdom and saw Cinderella and Elena of Avatar, Avatlor. I'm not sure. I think it's Elena. So yeah, I, I don't really have a top 10. Um, it's just kind of like whoever we happen to run into. Uh, let's see. Where did you, I already did that one. Okay. Do you do character dining? We do sometimes. We did not this trip. Um, in the past, yeah, I mean, it's probably every other trip, I would say, it seems like we do character dining or not. Some trips we've done multiple character dinings in one trip, um, and then other trips we have done no character dining. 
And again, with that, sometimes the budget determines if we're doing character dining or not. Character dining can be kind of pricey. And so um, the year that we did multiple character dinings, we had a meal plan. And so it was cost effective to do multiple character dinings. It really didn't cost that much um, because we just we'd already paid for the dining and it was what it was but um other years when we've wanted to do a trip for less we just don't do character dining um or we'll just do one character dining but um my kids have been getting older i mean obviously all kids are getting older but um they do not enjoy character dining like they used to. I definitely think my youngest is still really into it, but three out of my four, I feel like have kind of aged out of that. I mean, definitely my oldest, they're there, they enjoy the food, but they do not care if the characters are there or not. My um, 11 year old, I think she thinks it's entertaining to watch, but she has no desire to get her picture with them. And then my nine year old, he just turned nine, he, I don't know, he's kind of bashful around the characters right now, so I don't know that he really cares either. Now the six-year-old, she still loves it, totally into it, and I do hope to do a princess dining with her before she gets too old. Um, I have been wanting to do one with her forever, and it just, for some reason, has not worked out. So hopefully I can get one in before she ages out. But, so again, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't, just kind of depends on the trip. Um, once all of my kids kind of age out of that though we will probably not do character dining because I feel like you can get really good food for less without the characters um you're pretty much just paying for those characters and it is great if you have never done character dining I highly recommend doing it at least once because it is a lot of fun um but depending on which one you pick can be kind of chaotic. And so I feel like you don't get to enjoy your food as much because there is so much other stuff going on. But I highly recommend Chippendale Garden Grill. That is my favorite character dining experience. So if you do want to try one, that is a great one to do. Okay, last question. <clears throat> is it possible to go for less than 10000 Yes, <laughs> you can definitely go for less than 10000 Well, I mean, I guess it depends on how many people and how long you want to go for. But um, a whole week for a family of six, which is what we are, we, yes, you can definitely do it for less than 10,000. Now it is Disney World, so the sky's the limit and you can definitely do it for more than 10,000. But um, if you wanted to do, I'm, I mean, I'm not sure how big your family is, but assuming you are a family our size, like that has a family of six, I would say minimum probably 5,000. I mean, don't hold me to that because things are always changing with prices. But I would say, yeah, minimum maybe five for a whole week. Um, and then, yeah, the sky's the limit. So you could maybe do it for less. It, so many factors go into this. Um, Disney charges different rates on different days. So, you know, if you go the second week of January and stay at an all-star and have a five-day, one-park-a-day ticket, and then you book that exact same trip in July, your costs could be very different. I mean, up to almost $1,000 different. So there's just so many factors that go into it. Um, the day matters, the month matters, if you're doing hoppers or not hoppers, what resort you stay at, what deals they're running, um, how you can get there um you know that plays into it but um i definitely think you could do it for five or possibly less i five is generous i would say that would be like a comfortable trip um staying off property can also save you quite a bit it just depends on where you're willing to stay um so yeah that's kind of hard to answer but yeah you can definitely do it for less than 10. um Yes, as long as you're not super picky about where you stay and all that stuff, because um, that can really play into it, but it is possible. Um, I, If you have more questions about that, I can always help you look into options. I am not a travel agent anymore, but um, I could try and answer questions about trip planning if you had them, if you want to message me. And then um, I could also try and... 
or you might just want to call like a travel agent and ask them. I can try and find, I think I know a few that I could maybe try and link below if you want to look that up um, to help you out there. So yeah, but it is, it is possible. A lot of people do it for less than 10. There's also lots of, um, I'll mention too, there's lots of different ways to get tickets. So you can just buy like a package from Disney. And sometimes that is your best option, especially when they're running certain deals and stuff. But sometimes it is cheaper to like say you're gonna stay off property so you book an off property hotel and you can find some decent rooms for as low as like 60 a night um so if you wanted to do that and then um and you don't I mean you don't have to do that like that resort I was telling you about that's in Flamingo Crossing I think I mean I've seen those rooms for like 120 and they sleep six and they're it's a nice new hotel um and they give you breakfast in the morning which is a cost savings so you know, you could stay somewhere like that. And then tickets, you can go to, it's Undercover Tourist, I believe it's called. They have discount tickets sometimes. And then through your job, um, sometimes workplaces, if you go like in the HR area, they have discounted tickets you can purchase through work. Um, there's like convention tickets if you're going to be like at a convention nearby. Um, so again, there's different ways that you could um, get tickets that are a little cheaper than if you were to just go and book them straight through Disney. You just want to kind of look through there. I would be leery of a third party selling tickets though, other than undercover tourists or if it's like through your work. Um, other than that, I, I don't know and I don't want to recommend because I would be leery of that. I... Um, I pretty much always just go through Disney. I've never actually booked undercover tourists, but I've heard of lots of people who do and have good success with that. So I know they're legit. But um, yeah, so there are lots of options out there. Thank you guys so much for asking me um, all these great, fun questions. I hope you had fun. I had fun. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Bye.